Welcome back. I'm Alfred Lembrot Weber, and today we have an extraordinary guest, our colleague in, and dear friend in Vancouver, um, author, uh, interdimensional explorer, and UFO expert, John Kelly. Welcome, John. Hello, Alfred. It's great to be with you again. Thank you. Um, John, there are some amazing synchronicities today that relate directly to the topic that we're going to address. And I, I want to just uh, make you aware of these and make the audience aware of them because I just became right, aware of them right before we went on air. Okay. And that is that today is Saturday, November 22nd, 2014. And uh, it's the anniversary of uh, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, of course, on uh, uh, no November tw 22nd, 1963, and in uh, Dealey Plaza. And it's also the anniversary of uh, the ruling of the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal, in which I served as a judge on November 22nd, 2011, uh, three years ago, uh, which held uh, U.S. President George W. Bush and U.K. Prime Minister Tony Blair of the Nuremberg-level war crime of the illegal invasion of Iraq and war of aggression. This was the application of the Nuremberg Principles to that war. And, uh, you know, which then has had a history of application since then. I mean, uh, Blair was almost arrested when he went to South Africa because Archbishop uh, Desmond Tutu and there were public petitions for the public prosecutor to arrest him, Blair in South Africa based on our judgment. So these things are being enforced. I mean, people want to say, well, where's the enforcement? Well, there's the enforcement that Bush and Blair can't travel outside of their CIA protected uh, domains inside of the uh, disunited States of America. So their matrix is starting to fall apart. However, that's not the anniversary because uh, the day after November 22nd. I got on a flight from Kuala Lumpur uh, to Johannesburg, South Africa, because our colleague um, Michael Tellinger, uh, through the intercession of uh, Laura Magdalene Eisenhower, invited uh, our, us to join and participate in a conference in Johannesburg and go down to Adam's Calendar, which is where the Anunnaki first landed. And I had to uh, land, take a connecting flight at the Hong Kong airport. Well, Malaysian Airlines, which is the famous airlines of MH370 false flag and MH17 false flag, where they start, tried to start World War I, I mean, World War Three. sorry, in 2014. I was th trying to think of 1914. These are all these connections. Well, what happened is that Malaysian Airlines is one of the few airlines that doesn't have a contract with connecting airlines. So they don't change your bags. So you got to run outside, grab your bags, go to the new airline and change change your bags. But they don't tell the passengers that. <laughs> okay. So I get to Hong Kong Airport. And I thought they were going to connect my bags to, to, to South African Airways, which I was supposed to get on, and they didn't. So I had to spend the next 24 hours in Hong Kong Airport to wait for the next flight to Johannesburg. Thank God I had those 24 hours. Why? Because I, went, I was then the uh, Seattle Exopolitics Examiner, and I went online... And I had just published a breakthrough article in which I had gotten two independent uh, participants in this top secret CIA 
program uh, using a, a teleporter, a very advanced type of teleporter gifted to the CIA by Grays, by which uh, uh, specially trained personnel could teleport from LAX to Mars in about 20 minutes. And I'd spoken to a couple of individuals who had done that, Andy Bishago and Brett Stillings, and gotten all their complete data. And I broke the news on, on Examiner at the same time that it was on Coast to Coast. Well, when I was, when I was delivering the judgment in Kuala Lumpur on this very day, November 22nd, Examiner took it, took the article offline and broke my contract because they said I was publishing, quote, false news. The news that Obama had been on Mars was false news, even though two eyewitnesses had testified to it. Mm -hmm. And I and I bring up this lengthy introduction and I apologize. I won't I won't interrupt again, but I thought it was rather an historic synchronicity since we're here to testify to your <laughs> your having taken a newsworthy uh, art to the examiner having taken your newsworthy article and having summarily taken it off the air off publication after it had been judged newsworthy. So we, we both went through the same experience and, and we're going to get more deeply into what this says about Examiner and what we have to do about Examiner. But first, I really want you to walk us through exactly what happened. Well, thank you, Alfred, for your introduction. And I think you've highlighted some very important points that are significant to my story. Uh, for several different reasons, our, our shared uh, collegial experience as examiners, as writers for examiner.com, uh, the uh, John F. Kennedy assassination date, which uh, President Kennedy fact factored into my news article that was, uh, that was censored, as I, I quoted from President Kennedy in that article. So how interesting that uh, an article featuring a quote from the president uh, denouncing secrecy was in fact sh shrouded in secrecy through an act of censorship by examiner.com. Uh, people who are familiar with my work know that I have a background, uh, a long-standing background in, in broadcasting through radio uh, as well as television and as a writer uh, for examiner.com for the past four and a half years through which my, my written work uh, received widespread distribution internationally throughout the major uh, English-speaking uh, media, including uh, publications such as uh, Wall Street Journal, Forbes, uh, Huffington Post, uh, the Irish Independent. Many, many publications carried my stories uh, as they appeared in that column uh, under the, uh, the auspices of what is now known as Journalism 2.0, in which the citizen journalist uh, receives access to publishing platforms and, and syndication that pre in previous decades or centuries has only been uh, allocated to the professional uh, publishing or journalistic newspaper world. The, the access to AP or Reuters syndication was only available if you were on staff with the New York Times, the Washington Post. We are in the new two, journalism 2.0 era and I have been exploring the potential of that uh, coming from a background uh, with intensive uh, uh, experience in radio where I was a feature producer for CBS at one time in the, in the early part of the century. Uh, so with, with this background and understanding appreciation for news uh, and all, all of the, the topics that are, that are worthy of exploration in our world, I made it an ed editorial decision to undertake a study of Bill Cosby's exchange with the Associated Press. The Associated Press had interviewed Mr. Cosby uh, earlier this month and uh, a discussion of the artworks that they had uh, loaned to the Smithsonian Museum of Afro-American uh, Art. And uh, during that interview, during that taped interview, the AP reporter also engaged Mr. Cosby in questions related to allegations of sexual abuse and rape that had surfaced uh, in the last six weeks or so, in which there are now 15 claimants or more who have stepped forwards 
and uh, state, stating that they had been raped or sexually assaulted by Bill Cosby, uh, with the earliest claim now, I think, extending back to as, uh, as far back as 1965. And so uh, there is a uh, tremendous uh, amount of uh, furor around, around Bill Cosby's conduct uh, over previous decades, uh, f fans and well-wishers, uh, people like myself who had grown up on Bill Cosby drip fueled media who had uh, watched Fat Albert when we were children uh, are shocked and dismayed to see such uh, allegations come forward and yet uh, it is our duty to attempt to make sense of the, the, the story and uh, again my editorial instincts drove me to the AP release because this was an interview that had been taped uh, in early November but they had withheld portions of the interview in which they had asked Mr. Cosby about sexual assault allegations uh, in which he declined to speak on. Uh, they, they, sensing a, 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 a change in the, uh, in the mood of the nation, uh, they, AP subsequently released their, their materials on November 19th. And Mr. Cosby spoke on camera to these allegations. Uh, his answer was diffusive. He did not speak directly to counter the claims or make any sort of uh, formal statement, but he did vocalize and uh, from my form of investigative analysis, those vocalizations served as, as a premise for a very interesting study and a newsworthy study. I determined this was a, a time to pursue that story. And so again, as somebody who had covered uh, presidential elections, uh, serial murders, uh, uh, a acts of war uh, on, on international news media, I, I had been featured, my studies had been featured in international news media for years prior to my entering into the examiner.com fold my instincts were still alert and active and I undertook uh, to, to report the news as I saw fit. And so I chose this story uh, based on the November 19th Associated Press release of video. Uh, the timeline of events that followed was that I completed my article and video which I published on examiner.com under my column, the Vancouver UFO Examiner uh, uh, associated with my YouTube video on November 20th, that, that very morning. And in the course of uh, conducting my the publication process. I uh, was also distributing the article through social media, Facebook, Google+, all the different places where my, my work may appear. And in the course of posting to Facebook, I was receiving comments from readers about what are called 404 errors, which meant that the article would not load upon clicking the link, which seemed, uh, seemed odd. Uh, from my side, as I was still logged into my administrative uh, access to examiner.com, the article continued to load. But for end users, there, were, there appeared to be a, a problem, and I received more than one report of this. So I logged out of the administrative site and went in as an end user to the site and saw that I, I was receiving the 404 error as well. The, the article, uh, in the hour or so in which it had remained on the site, it had been uh, reviewed by the editorial staff who had uh, indicated in writing that the article was approved for newsworthy status with the caveat that uh, examiner.com's quota of Bill Cosby related uh, sexual, sexual assault allegation related news with Google, uh, Google News had been reached and they, had, they, could, they could not forward my article for syndication via Google News, a claim which later proved to be false and I will get into that. Uh, but this caveat was issued along with the newsworthy approval and so I undertook I, I, I proceeded at that time to continue distributing the article with the understanding that uh, it was green-lighted by professional editorial review staff. I had met uh, the minimum standard for newsworthiness um, through editorial review, and I could proceed. So I was surprised to see that the article had been pulled. Uh, the article title was uh, Bill Cosby's Secret Messages Disclose MKUltra Rape Demon. And uh, upon reinvestigation as to why it was pulled, I saw a, a note from the reviewers who had gone back and revised their comments in which they, they had cited that the article was unpublished due to inappropriate content. And they invited me up, uh, upon receipt of that note to pursue uh, any questions I may have with, with examiner's support desk. And so uh, following receipt of that information, I submitted a ticket to, to examiner.com support requesting clarification as to what the review staff had meant by, by doing this. And uh, upon submission of that ticket, I, I then received an email, uh, uh, a notice from an individual uh, 
employed by Examiner.com named Gregory Hunt, who stated that the Vancouver UFO Examiner column had been discontinued, canceled, the account was closed, and uh, that began my inquiry as to uh, what, what had happened in, in those few hours of reporting that news. This is the timeline of events that I faced from uh, determination of newsworthy coverage that deserved to be reported, deserved to be investigated, uh, publication of an article and a video uh, that was at f first green-lighted by editorial staff, then a reversal of position that seemed inexplicable, uh, and then complete termination of, of, the, of the column uh, with, as we will see, uh, apparently no, no really good reasoning, reasoning or explanation that accompanied that. Now, I have three different hypotheses that I have formulated in an attempt to understand what, what it is that happened. And the first hypothesis is I, I, I refer to as the mistaken identity hypothesis, in which examiner.com reviewers errantly approved the article, then correctly flagged it for inappropriate content. Now, the status of this hypothesis upon review is that it is provably false, and it is, it is so because there are thousands of incidents of the same language, the same language used in my article, or worse, that already appear on the examiner.com site. If we are going to talk about standards of a pr propriety, we have to understand, and I think this is, a, this is a very important point, we have to understand that what appears on examiner.com is the de facto evidentiary content standard of the website. What's on the site represents the examiner.com standard. That's it. There is really no gray area to confuse us. And so the site provides a Google search tool. And if individuals were to uh, take keywords from my article that appear in the article, which is about a thousand words long, but that might be uh, a reasonable person might sense that there may be some controversy around the use of that language and, and apply the Google search across the examiner.com website to detect the appearance of those words, they would find uh, thousands of incidents of use of the same or worse language already on the website. So by precedent, it appeared that I was within an appropriate standard uh, for how could it be that examiner would support thousands of incidents of the same or worse language uh, otherwise, if it wasn't already acceptable. Uh, we will get into more detail about some, the nature of some of this language and how it was used on the site and other incidents. But let me go further into these hy different hypotheses. The second hypothesis, which I'm willing to explore, is one I call the cognitive dissonance hypothesis, whereupon receipt of a support ticket detailing evidence of site-supported inappropriate language Examiner.com terminated my column as a means of damage control. And we can see that uh, an individual named Sterling Allen, who had written for Examiner.com in 2012 in good faith about uh, alternative energy, had, uh, had encountered a related incident upon complaining about site content that he felt was inappropriate to accompany the dignity of his uh, newsworthy and scientifically oriented articles. He had, he had concerns about uh, provocative, sexual, uh, sexually explicit or exploitative content that appeared on the site accompanying his articles. He, he notified examiner.com, upon which his column was terminated uh, immediately. So we will, go, we will talk more about that. Uh, so this hypothesis, the cognitive dissonance hypothesis, in other words, the absence of shared values between writers and, and management, uh, appears plausible. However, it doesn't explain why the article was pulled after it was approved. It doesn't, it doesn't explain uh, that uh, something could meet a standard uh, by professional review and then suddenly not meet the standard. So our third hypothesis, I think, is mo the most inclusive. Uh, this is one that I refer to as Operative Cosby, in which examiner.com responded to pressure from a CIA-like entity, such as that described in the findings of the Church Committee, who described how the CIA currently maintains a network of several hundred foreign individuals around the world who provide intelligence for the CIA and at times attempt to influence opinion through the use of covert propaganda. These individuals provide the CIA with direct access to a large number of newspapers and periodicals, scores of press services and news agencies, radio and television stations, commercial book publishers, and other foreign media outlets. 
what the, what the church committee was saying in 1975-1976 is that the CIA had effectively infiltrated all the major media. There was a CIA desk in, inside every television news station, every newspaper, every radio station, every, every magazine. There was a CIA desk vetting the content and, and uh, influencing dis editorial decision makings as to what was published, what was not published, as well as feeding content uh, that would appear as news. We, we know recently that the FBI was, was hoaxing, uh, was committing fraud, representing themselves as uh, writers for uh, the Seattle Post Intelligencer, I believe is the publication, who are infuriated to find out that the, the FBI used its Post Intelligencer as, as a uh, cover and a sting operation. This was reported in the last two months. So the, this, this scenario exists today, but this was highlighted in, in 1975, 1976, a generation or, or longer f f before today. So what, what is the state of affairs today if, if in 1975, 76, the church committee determined that the CIA had effectively infiltrated all the major media at that time? Now, the status of this hypothesis upon review is that it is highly plausible in that it offers context for an attempt by Examiner.com to silence disclosure of Bill Cosby's CIA MK Ultra relationship, which is cited in my article, to, to silence that disclosure from, from mainstream news. In other words, that uh, Examiner.com would not serve as a platform for the dissemination of this information. They would not be uh, tagged I I under scrutiny uh, from other parties. Uh, they would not be blamed for uh, propagating uh, these claims. Uh, f furthermore, that the, the act of uh, the act of, of canceling the column would deny access to their publishing platform, which it has has been a matter of some importance. In that, uh, as my flagship newspaper, so to speak, in the online world, Examiner.com has been has provided the gateway to, for new Google News uh, syndication for my articles. And uh, when they implemented their uh, newsworthy approval standards sometime in the past few years, uh, they tabulated numbers. And uh, there was, there's a record that shows that of the hundreds of articles that, are, that I've published, at least 100 of them met newsworthy approval. So I received, I received if not uh, Google's syndication, I received newsworthy recognition for 100 pieces that I wrote and distributed through their site. So this is one of the uh, benefits that I received as as one of the uh, authors publishing through that platform. Well, by canceling the, the column, they have denied me access to that platform. And uh, for now, I do not have the benefit of Google News syndication. And I've clarified earlier in, in today's talk that under Journalism 2.0, Google News is the Reuters or the Associated Press syndicator uh, of, of the citizen journalist. It's how my articles get to USA Today. It's how my articles get to Forbes, Ind Irish Independent, uh, Long Island Newsday, Florida, Space Coast, uh, Florida Today. I can go on and on about the publication, the list, the very lengthy list of publications who I've enjoyed syndication to via this distribution platform. Furthermore, uh, Examiner.com has denied uh, j me my journalistic affiliation with a recognized uh, news publisher through through canceling the uh, through canceling the column, and they have. They are inflicting economic damages upon me as an author. Uh, they will, they will, uh, at their discretion, continue to run my articles and run ads against those articles and receive revenues, of which I will no longer be part of receiving any share of those monies. Uh, so there is there is an element of economic pu punitive measures uh, that accompany this as well. Now, I am not a stranger to blacklisting on major media platforms. In 2003, I was blacklisted from Coast to Coast AM for attempting to report Arnold Schwarzenegger's role as a CIA operative prior to the California elections. So I, due to my uh, more than, more than you know, one and a half decades experience in media, I am in the privileged position to, to make assessments about matters of conduct on the part of editorial and managerial staff in terms of uh, censorship and blacklisting, and I am able to identify that this is a, an instance in which uh, specifically uh, reporting news uh, related to CIA issues by non-controlled individuals, non-official individuals, 
is subject to sense is uh, results. There are repercussions of, of censorship and blacklisting that accompany those reports or that 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 function. And uh, I, I'm able to identify that. And so I find this to be the most plausible of the different hypotheses that I'm willing to explore. But we will go further into the consultative process that, in which I engaged with examiner.com management in my attempts to understand their decision making. And we will, we will see that uh, due process was, was undertaken in attempting to, to, to reconcile uh, whatever matters may have been, been error or difference of opinion that, that had led to not only the censorship of the article but the, the cancellation of the column. There, there was such a process and, and I, have, I have information to share about that as well. Now, in terms of the, you know, weighing the, weighing the relative value of this column, um, I, I would like to emphasize that um, I brought to bear significant experience in broadcasting uh, to, to, to these writings. Uh, again, I had, I had been recognized as a feature producer for CBS Radio prior to, uh, 10 years almost prior to uh, beginning this column. I, I, I had some sense of what news and media and the public, uh, public information and free speech meant before I started. The, we, we can say that the Vancouver UFO Examiner has been noted internationally for exclusive original investigative reporting into matters such as UFOs, ET contact, consciousness, paranormal, disclosure, exopolitics, and related mainstream news. And this is evidenced by nearly 100 newsworthy approved articles with widespread, widespread distribution and citations in major mainstream news outlets throughout the English-speaking world. Alfred, you have, from time to time, you've seen how some of the articles had been, been published on sites like MSNBC, for example, when we, when we had exopolitics content running through my column. So you can vouch, and many people have seen this as well. Uh, so uh, it, it stands to reason that there was international editorial recognition for the value of the content. At the same time, um, I think it's important to consider, I, I'm presenting that in the course of, of reporting the news, I've encountered this uh, seeming roadblock or pitfall. And uh, what, you know, what, what kind of, what, what do I think, what, what shapes my uh, sense of what is news? I think we can, we can judge that by evaluating some of the content that I've covered that I think is newsworthy. And just to highlight a few of the topics that I've covered, some of the most significant news stories that appeared first in this column, and this is global first reporting. This is not um, re generic rewrites of something off a newswire or reporting something from another website or a TV show. This is original investigative reporting that appeared first in this column. And this includes uh, reporting on Julian Assange's UFOs, Edward Snowden's psychic human extraterrestrials, Kenneth Arnold's aliens, the ET influence on Canadian politics, extensive coverage of the East Eddy Ranch at Mount Adams in Washington, Dennis Hopper's Easy Rider UFO, which was picked up by AOL News, uh, Br British black ops in the UK in the Ukraine sniper Maidan conspiracy wow. is entirely original reporting. C CIA involvement in the Ottawa shootings. Uh, this is entirely original reporting. Secrets of Russian spy Anna Chapman to show that uh, gave fair and balanced play to both sides of the East-West Cold War equation. Uh, Gabriel Giffords, Sarah Palin dreams. Uh, another. Profound uh, story that was covered in the column. Robert Picton's MK Ultra connection, which you and I discussed at great right. length in our interview together, as well as the CIA Al Gore sting attempt. These stories did not appear in any other outlets. Th that that column served as the distribution point and the uh, the environment in which those ideas were incubated and first reported. Many of these stories, as uh, far-reaching as they may sound. Uh, many, many, uh, many uh, uh, of my reports have have received widespread validation for their factual accuracy. Uh, it, mo the most important point being is that I, I beat the headlines uh, internationally, reporting reporting news before it became it met widespread ex acceptance. And so, by that standard, uh, I pursued these and many other stories. Uh, the, the 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 articles covered uh, substantial amounts of new material and investigative reporting covering Vancouver and British Columbia UFO incidents, and these this was supported by multi-camera video evidence. There were many many peers, colleagues, and mentors who invested in the uh, 
foundation development and growth of this column, without whom uh, this column would not have been possible. You, you Alfred Lambert Weber, were, were a key individual in getting this column started. Andrew D. Bishago uh, acted as a pro bono editor, helping me get, on, get my writing on track. Um, local people like Les Mirza, Charles Lamoureux, uh, people in the southern United States like Duana Paul. You know, I couldn't have produced Marfa Light's coverage without Duana Paul. I couldn't have covered Exeter University without Alfred Lambert Weber. Uh, all, all, all the contributors uh, amongst the, my peers and colleagues uh, were invaluable in helping to, to uh, support this. And so, uh, this was not this column wasn't just a personal platform for my opinions and ideas, rather. It, uh, it served the public interest in a variety of ways, and it brought, it brought forward news and stories uh, and a variety of interviews that weren't being done uh, by other outlets. Uh, it, it, led, it led on many fronts, and I think that, uh, in other words, my, sum my summary is that there was significant and substantial news value in the continuity of that column, uh, something which we will see was obliterated with the stroke of a pen, so to speak, uh, apparently with uh, no due process or consultative process uh, and, and under what I describe as a, as a doctrine of unreasonableness. So that is, that is my, you know, the gist of my presentation today in terms of what I, what I wish to share with my readers, my viewers, my peers, my colleagues and mentors about this, the telling of this tale, this history of, of this four and a half year uh, journey and adventure that had led to so many interesting avenues and so much opportunity for insight and sharing, uh, doing work that just was not being done in the field. Uh, the, this column provided a venue for, for things to happen that were not happening otherwise. Uh, I, I think it's been a marvelous adventure. I've, I've learned a, a great deal by participating in it. But as we can see, we're, this, the journey has reached a new level uh, where in, in the in the professional career of this column, it has it has hit the uh, it has hit the blacklist, and uh, th we we have to attempt you know from there uh, to envision a vision of a, a better and different future. So I come to you today because this is all late breaking. It, this happened just this this past week. Uh, I am still f formulating my, that vision about what what lies ahead. Uh, I still have a an established platform on YouTube with a highly viewed uh, channel there. And uh, my website is still up. Uh, I still have a significant presence on Facebook. Uh, I, I, have not, I, I have lost an affiliate, in other words, through examiner.com cutting the column. I've lost an affiliation, but I have not lost uh, access to the public. And I, I think I was writing for the public interest. Uh, my greatest goal is, to, is that my news reaches the people who can evaluate these ideas uh, and information for themselves. And if, I, if I'm successful in doing so, then I think that the purpose of, of these writings and this work is being done. Right, right John. Well, thank, thank you. That, that's a very, uh, very thorough and uh, detailed and well thought out, well, well thought out, well thought out presentation. I, I would sort of like to pursue two, two aspects of it. The first are just kind of some detail questions to kind of clean up, to clean up one end of it. You mentioned three options on 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 the one side of it, or three kind of three three kind of scenarios. Um, the one that kind of rang my inner bell because, um, or rather, seemed true to me, because it rang true with my experience of what happened to me when I was in Kuala Lumpur, Hong Kong, and they pulled, the, the examiner pulled my stuff. Uh, oh, and at that time, George W. Bush was flying into Africa, right next door into East Africa for a greenwash trip into East Africa saying, oh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm here to obliterate AIDS. I'm here to stop AIDS. So they were pulling out all the stops. Uh, it seemed to me that the Operation Mockingbird model is what I was hit with back in November 22nd, 2011. And you, you posit kind of the Operation Mockingbird model in, in, in scenario number C where you say 
operative uh, such and such. Is that what you feel you're kind of leaning toward or? Yeah, I, I feel that this is the most plausible of the three hypotheses because yeah. it, it, it explains uh, both circumstances of circum uh, censorship and uh, blacklisting. Yeah, yeah. So, so that means that uh, when you say blacklisting, it's blacklisting at Examiner. Exactly. My access to examiner.com as the Vancouver UFO examiner no longer exists. I have no further administrative control over the content in the column. I am unable to uh, edit uh, or change otherwise anything that has already been published. My, I, have, I retain login credentials under what is called AXS, but uh, I, I am unable to affect any change moving forwards to, to the Vancouver UFO examiner. I have been, I have been locked out. Right, right. And and uh, so do you, and so you do you, do you plan any any action that, that way other than other than speaking out t today? Or are you just going to kind of leave that? Or well, uh, I I am I am assembling and collating my materials and and moving on. Uh, yeah. I, I you know this this conversation is is a form of constructive action. But I, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm just emerging out from under the uh, impact of, right. of these changes, and they I are quite—they are quite emotional. I I agree with you. So I, I have yet to formulate, uh, you know, a clear vision as to what what will come. But I would I would say that in reflection, uh, if if the Examiner.com uh, website conditions are a microcosm of our society, there is an indictment of of extreme capitalism, of plantation style exploitation. Yeah. Uh, things that you have raised in your comments about about their practices, uh, yeah. it is it is further evidence that the, those conditions exist. Uh, but it, but they are not certainly not the only corporate entity uh, following the, this, these types of practices. And I think that that it really calls upon us to uh, attempt to envision a better society and a better economy that does not uh, that is not so far out of balance because this appears to be a pathologically imbalanced scenario. Yeah. Well, the other, the other uh, kind of avenue that I'd like to explore with you more in a conversational way, as a, as a fellow journalist uh, who we've both kind of been down this path before, and we've both experienced the same experiences at examiner.com, and we've both seen what the access to Google News means and how it was shut down. And we've both experienced other uh, kind of, uh, I would call them, uh, what would you call them, internet windows that package journalists and give them, or used to give them, Google News access and then kind of fudge, fudge that. Aggregators, there yeah, are news aggregators. aggregators. Sure, sure. Um, now, uh, I I have I I recall having seen uh, news aggregators or collective journalists of a positive nature who got who were who were able to get together, and and I can see. I mean. I, as I was m mentioning to you, we had to go on the air here on this program 10 minutes late because at 2 o'clock I had to go on with an international network that called me to be on the air internationally to give an opinion under the Geneva Conventions as to whether the collective punishment of the Israeli Defense Force of destroying the homes of individual Palestinians and destroying their family homes, whether that was a war crime, which it is, because it's collective punishment. And and those words, which are, you know, on this same outlet, go out to an international audience. And so we all see what having access to that platform with the knowledge that you have and that I have is, it's very large. So, in this day and age, there must be a way 
for persons like yourself and myself who are bona fide journalists, maybe to form a collective. Let's say that, that I, let me just finish the thought here. Let's say that you and I, and maybe we find a couple of others, we'd be collectives. And then we put our minds together and we say, look, let's form a collective uh, and let's go get ourselves signed up. So our stuff gets accepted by Google News. Isn't that something that you and I can do? I, I think that is a, a worthy uh, vision that, that, is, that is, should be uh, investigated and studied because um, one, of the one of the conclusions that I've reached from this exercise uh, is, it relates to my willful nature. You know, I, I wrote that story, come hell or high water, with no regard for consequences. I, I understood in a national security culture that writing about the CIA uh, and MK Ultra and high-profile media personalities <laughs> had, uh, had an came with an element of risk. I, I, I assumed that element of risk when I undertook to write that. That is, and I think that is a defi it's a defining uh, characteristic. You know, I think that we come to know ourselves, in other words, in, in high-pressure situations. And I, I think it's fair to say that under, given, given a high-pressure scenario, I will act in such a way. I, it's predictable right. that I, I will not, I will not uh, wither away uh, under fire. I will advance uh, with no regard for consequences uh, due, due to my strong feeling, uh, my, my inborn news instincts, so to speak. So this may or may not make me suitable for cookie cutter uh, corporate environments where uh, people are expecting everybody to uh, to to, uh, to uh, limit uh, the the the, uh, the scope of their discourse. I was spoiled when I was in radio because I was given free license to cover every topic from sports to politics. There was no restriction on my on my journalistic free speech and investigative reporting. There was absolutely no restriction applied until I hit hit blacklisting with coast to coast. So. I am. I am really. Uh, I, I am that type of person, uh, and I think I need to assume some responsibility uh, f with that understanding to not to uh, find a way, as as you're describing, to to uh, found a platform that supports the continuity of what appears to be a good work, and uh, to do so that in ways that can help to facilitate others who may be facing the same the, the same challenges. Uh, it's you know we may collectively we may have the brain trust and skills sets to uh, to crack this and solve this problem together and form a complete a competing platform where we are no, not no longer subject to uh, error uh, willful or, or otherwise uh, that inflicts damages upon our intellectual properties and uh, confuses the public as to as to the nature of our communications and our ideas and information I think that we have both you and I uh, in our in and long, long journeys through the press have seen enough of these types of incidents to not, to not want to, to continue going around this, this cycle. Um, and I think there is, good, there is good reason to suggest that with, with enough infrastructure and resources that a, a new platform could be forged out of, out of this uh, seeming crisis that would uh, be uh, uh, you know, a bright new dawn upon, uh, upon this time uh, that is clouded in excessive sleaze and darkness. <laughs> Otherwise, I think that's. I think this is worthy of pursuit. I don't necessarily know all the all the uh, details of what kind of infrastructure would be required, but there are such things as uh, as uh, templates uh, that existing templates to launch Reddit style websites that even support uh, public contributors to write on uh, to create platforms whereby public re citizen reporters can become engaged and an examiner like. Uh, uh, citizen reporter venue can be founded uh, uh, w with the caveat that it's done on, on a much higher standard uh, that involves ethics and values. So I'm aware that these things exist and I, I look forward to further meetings and conversations with you in which we could, we could attempt to, to understand what it would take and assemble resources that could make such a thing possible. I think it would be a, uh, a tremendous uh, ad ad advantage uh, and, and, and speaking of advantage and, and, and marketplace issues, I, want, I, I would like to emphasize that uh, for viewers who may not be familiar with Alfred or myself, that both of us, our, our, uh, our, back, our professional backgrounds include extensive work in, in competitive corporate environments. 
and to 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 say that our columns were were, were came to an end at examiner.com because we were not able to compete in an open marketplace is 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 patently ridiculous. No, no, I, my, I, I, when they terminated my, my column, which I believe was at the direction of the CIA controller and examiner, because I had outed that lifelong CIA asset, Barry Satoro, who's their asset in, in the White House, and his having been trained to be on the gray-led ET program to visit Mars when he was an 18 year old and that's why they terminated it because they it kind of crossed the line and they didn't want the public to know that yes and you and your column at that time was top ranked nationally it was, it was top ranked nationally I, I I I had more readers than the examiner White House reporter I mean I, I was a top ranked political reporter at Examiner, and I was the exopolitical reporter. And so we are talking here not about uh, people who are unable to perform in these functions. We are talking about top-ranked yeah. writers, thinkers, visionaries. And my column enjoyed very high ranking in in, in its niche uh, yeah. for a sustained sustained period of time. And as I, I'm able to cite widespread exposure through uh, high profile mainstream outlets. So yeah, yeah. it's it's fair to say that we these are very competitive offerings. Uh, the the flow of information and ideas that come from our desks yeah. uh, are are uh, are a step beyond the genericism uh, and the uh, the the placating uh, pacifying uh, media that that is out there we are not afraid to engage the bull by the horns and to right. wrestle the story into into an intelligible format and deliver that story to the public so i i think this is a very high we have we have a very high value offering yeah. and that need that offering needs to be uh presented in a venue uh, uh, uh of honor and, and dignity yeah. and uh and and uh, efficiency that that is that you know a highly functional environment. We need we need we need to do that. I think that our uh, our fates and destinies would be better served if we were able to to create such an environment for ourselves. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that this is how a lot of the alternative news agencies got started. I think was there were breakaways from you know the uh, the oppression, and now where we have the centralization and especially recently the the NSA and the New World Order attempting to shut down all alternative media well we're coming in with the opposite wave where we're where we are going to go on to Google News we are going to we, we are going to take our rightful place in reporting what is the news and you know, and and begin to report not the the tur turn the matrix inside out, and report that rightfully, which is what I think you began to do, where you took Cosby as an MK Ultra, you know, diversion on mainstream media and turned him hit him inside out at the subconscious level and say, look, you've got an MK Ultra asset and this is what you have on the inside out. And that's where they had to pull the plug because, you know, uh, they didn't want one of their uh, MK Ultra puppets uh, exposed. Cats out of the bag. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, in part, we can see that they're almost uh, impotent efforts uh, are, uh, are 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 just decl declarations of, of s almost surrender to the truth. They are the, the truth has has been outed. It has emerged. They are really impotent to do anything about it. Yeah. And it is really up for us to to grasp you know to, to grasp this, the challenge and reach for the ring, so to speak, to 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 uh, to uh, salvage success from short short term difficulties. So yeah. I, I, again, I I have not. You know, I have certainly not come up with ever, you know the answers to all these questions, but I have, I, have, with given the history that you've recited about uh, since 2011, uh, yeah. I've been a deep, I've had a deep awareness about conditions at Examiner.com, and I have, I have worked under those conditions, uh, uh, which are certainly not optimal, but uh, when the day came, you know, when the bell rang, 
and I received the notice. Uh, certainly, I, in many ways, I was mentally and emotionally prepared to uh, to forge ahead, uh, independent of of, of their uh, claims, recognition, what, whatever. Uh, you know, it, it appears just due to the sleaze factor that appear that seems yeah. to be operating on a site where there are thousands of incidents. I mean, ten thousand incidents of the F word appearing in articles on the site. 500 or more incidents of the N-word, and, and they're saying they can't do anything about it. I mean, this is just sheer incompetence, and it's ludicrous. It is ludicrous to single people out and say that inappropriateness is, is the basis of, of uh, not only censorship, but, yeah. uh, but pulling, tearing down the entire column. It's nuts. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Th th we, you know, the limits of that, uh, you know, that, is, that, that was what was offered to us. You know, can we summon a better model, and can we execute... Uh, we're, we're coming to the close of 2013. You know, maybe maybe the this winter. 2014. We, excuse me, 2014. Yes, and uh, you see, I my my time machine is, is kind of <laughs> going a little ra random here too. Uh, but we're coming we're coming into the winter season, and maybe this season will be time to incubate these new ideas and to investigate yeah, and, the founding and, of a new yeah. platform. Yeah, yeah, good, and, and then really come out and really understand how to interface with Google News. And really make that effortless so that our news is starting to come out, not, not with a struggle, but it's that the world wants to know the inside out story. And, and, for, and furthermore, that uh, we, we could become uh, instrumental in uh, developing the careers of, of, of the young, uh, th thoughtful writers, journalists, uh, sure. visionaries who are emerging from the population who are seeking access to uh, outlets that provide better resources uh, and be better better visibility you know we we could under those terms be, be instrumental in, in developing the careers of the great writers yet to come yeah yeah what what occurs to me is that both of us have high visibility channels on YouTube there's an affiliation between YouTube and Google, is there not? Or, Google is the parent company of YouTube. Oh, oh, you, you, you do, right. And, and so we are now presenting the inside out news on Google's, uh, on Google's subsidiary YouTube. Mm -hmm. So why can't we present the textual version of that inside out news on Google News that can feed into the whole world of print media. It's just a, it's just kind of a lateral move, right? Yeah, this I mean, is the we, problem. We we could make that we could make that argument to Google and say, look, we're we're just we are leading edge. It's not alternative news. It's inside out news that that we present. And this is the promise of journalism 2.0 that uh, we can wrest, wrestle control from the uh, st establishment media to, uh, to go direct to the audience ourselves with, with, with the aid of these technological platforms like Google syndication. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's something that we, we can undertake. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if examiners only perceived value is, is, is the opportunity for syndication, uh, yeah. Then uh, that's that's that seems uh, that that's a that's a that's a, a hat that could be filled, you know, a seat sure. that we could sure. we could occupy ourselves. Yeah, these are very promising uh, avenues, and that take all of the uh, wealth and and all of the value that we have been producing already on YouTube and make it into text, and and just seek another. Uh, another venue for it. Exactly. We, we've we've proven uh, the proof of concept is in the number of views and, and subscribers on, on these channels. Uh, there is an audience for for the content. It's yeah. it's, pro it's proven. So proof of concept is already there. Uh, it, it seems natural that it could translate into these other uh, media formats, and that it, it it could become the feature content on these. Uh, you know, imagine USA Today. Uh, with with a with space for exopolitics uh, TV related content, for example, yeah, appearing yeah. as a regular feature on the yeah. website. So, or, it, or even be, be, being able to 
to uh, have access, you know, in going in steps and steps, have our bylines and our stories have access to Google News. So it would be able to be transmitted. I mean, that, you know, and I mean, it was starting, but sure, that, that, that vision sounds, sounds, sounds very good. So in part, this, this is really, it comes down to the public interest and what does, you know, what will the public support? Will the public support independence to challenge the conventions of the day and which have, uh, you know, hit their glass ceiling, you know, the standards, <laughs> the standards of our times uh, at this corporate level have, have really uh, demonstrated their, their fallibility. And is this a model that the public is going to continue to invest in, or will they take a chance on uh, some seasoned veterans to, to help to uh, lay the foundations for a better future path based on uh, substantial knowledge and experience and the ability to deliver uh, meaningful content on a, on a frequent basis? So I think you know, we have to appeal to the public and say, you know, you've, you've helped us this far. You know, will, you, will you support us with, with the different means that we will require you know, will you stay with us on this journey and this next this next stage sure. to guarantee that you know we fulfill we fulfill the promise of what we set out to undertake that that we've see, that has been seen in different glimpses. Yeah. You know, will we fulfill uh, that promise? Exactly. Will you help us? And 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 the news that 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 we have broken uh, about the Picton Farm being a place of ritual slayings that. Uh, uh, the proceedings of the International Tribunal for War for Crimes of Church and State, of uh, that the UK Crown, that the Vatican, the Papacy, the Dutch monarchy, the Belgian monarchy are all sustained by an international network of pedophilia, infanticide. Uh, 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 you know, ritual killing of children and child trafficking. I mean, that, you know, people deserve that inside out news. I mean, that that's now common knowledge in, in our circles that, uh, that, you know, through our inside news networks and then YouTube and out to Facebook and out to our mailing list. But now we're ready to jump into the Google News into the platforms that go into, you know, people's iFablets. This is an iFablet. It's known as an i iPhone 6 Plus. I call it an iFablet. You have cross between the phone and a tablet. But, but uh, uh, so, uh, you know, so that the world begins to awaken uh, you know, all stratifications of the world begin to awaken. So it is no longer a Quixotesque, <laughs> but rather it's very, uh, you know, very practical. And I think that, that we have served an apprenticeship at examiner.com <laughs> that now deserves to be put to work. Yeah, we, we, we undertook the, the common burden, uh, you know, that any any aspiring writer w w would undertake in that venue. We went to yeah. the Citizen Journalism 101 environment where f tens of thousands of other individuals are trying to start writing careers. We, yeah. we, we, walk, we walked through that. We, we, we hit the, the terminus point of what that institution could offer. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we have a great deal to reflect on in hindsight, but... Uh, we, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not trying to say that we're, we're better than, or uh, examiner is not good enough for us, or something like that. We are, yeah. we're saying that in all practice, we've earned our stripes, yeah. and it's it, the dignity of that distinction uh, is expressed through undertaking a novel, novel venture, and applying, applying those resources, those skills, and insight, applying them to the shaping and developing of something better. This is this is social progress, you know that so, the so, so social progress exactly. The, wis the wisdom keepers are 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 in action, doing something to uh, to create a stronger society. You know, and I and I had a very prominent author write me today, and she said, Alfred, this is all very fine, you know, talking about the interviews that we are doing, but. When is the larger society going to become aware? 
And that's almost feeds directly into the conversation that we are having, which is when is the larger society going to become aware? When, it, when are all the newspapers and the media going to start talking about it? It's when we can bridge through to that and, and uh, uh, you know, deconstruct Operation Mockingbird. Well, we just won't go through where there's a mockingbird. We'll go through where there's some hummingbirds. <laughs> <laughs> Birds of paradise, maybe. Birds of paradise, right. <laughs> Good. Well, uh, do you have any other points that, that you feel that, that you want to raise that, that you may not have had the opportunity to, to raise? You know, there, there, are, there are fine details uh, that may or may not be as important. I think I, I, I've said some of the most important things. I've expressed that I responsibly engaged in, in due process and a consultative process with it, uh, management at examiner.com. As, as attempting to dice, to uh, decipher their cryptic uh, methodologies, uh, I would like to cite from the emails that I received just to give uh, the audience uh, fair play uh, to any lingering questions about um, the outcomes of those discussions. And uh, not only did uh, Gregory Hunt, the uh, his title is uh, Senior Manager of Content and Media Access, not only did he cite inappropriate content in my article as justification for taking it down, but in response to my question is how, how was it that he determined that escalation to uh, blacklisting my column w was appropriate? Uh, he responded uh, verbatim. He said, according to our terms of use, we reserve the right to terminate your access to or use of our site for any reason or no reason in our sole discretion with or without notice to you which I refer to as uh, the unreasonableness doc doctrine, meaning that uh, there is no call to reason within the halls of examiner.com management decision making. These are not, by, by, by their own statement, they are not reasonable individuals. And therefore, uh, reasonable people will have to uh, use discretion, exercise discretion in, in considering their engagement with such individuals. If, if we want reasonable outcomes, we will not first choose to engage with unreasonable individuals. This is no reason, there is no reason and no requirement to substantiate such a decision. It's entirely unreasonable. I did, I did attempt to determine what was going on in their minds and uh, the response is that they are void of reason. And so I'm left to my own devices and with your generous invitation, Alfred, uh, you know, we may be defining here today the, the, next, the next phase in growth and opportunity. And again, I hope that we can inspire others uh, who may be feeling uh, oppressed in different ways in their in their working lives and situations, looking for better professional opportunities, better career yeah. growth opportunities. You know, everyone's got to work. Uh, can can something better happen? I think I think that possibility exists. Uh, let's take this flair and talent that we've uh, right. spun into so many important stories and turn it into something practical that will have uh, lasting meaning in in the wider society. Yeah, it's it's uh, not so much. Let's break through to the mainstream. Let's, let's break through because we are the mainstream. <laughs> where we kind of morph, our, our next morph is into the mainstream where we, the, we are the inside out that, that becomes the, the, the inside morphs so that we become the outside. Anyway, I, I'm not quite sure if I'm communicating, but... Well, we're going we're gonna to bridge the perceived gap. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Well, uh, we're, we're really honored that you came to us to uh, share this w w with us. It feels like this synchronous journey. I mean, November 22nd, November 22nd, November 22nd, November 22nd. I mean, that's pretty... Synchronous. That's a magical number, 1122. And uh, in honor of John F. Kennedy, who is one of my heroes, I remember I was sailing with my uh, friend in his uh, sailboat in the inlet there at Palm Beach, Florida, and John F. Kennedy came by in the Honey Fitz. He was standing in the stern in a pair of bright red shorts, let land it, laughing his head off because we had to do a a quick thing, otherwise the honey fist would have would have would have run us over, and he was just laughing his head off at the end at the end of it. 
but uh, yeah, so I have fond fond memories of him. <laughs> and he was a he was a uh, a star seed who came. They call it deep space warfare. Who came in to really elevate the vibration, you know, of the planet in in his particular role. Of course, there's a lot of disinfo around him. So here's honoring John F. Kennedy, and here's in his memory that we launch. Uh, a new news service. Yeah, I think there's a place for, for a new platform, and we um, may just be the, the pioneers who are going to achieve that. Excellent. Good. Well, thank you very much. And, and we look forward to your joining us, to your joining ourselves in this new platform <laughs> as events develop. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alfred. Thank you so much.